Tight, no matter what goes on, no matter what happens, amen, no matter how big the storm looks or sounds, amen, everything's going to be all right. Why? Because God is on your side. Amen. 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 He is. Come on. The Lord. Verse 2 says, listen to this. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I heard a minister this morning talking about a watermelon. And everybody knows that a watermelon grows and they're round, right? Mm -hmm. You ever seen a square watermelon? Well, you know what? They made this thing that they can put where that watermelon begins to grow and it can grow inside this square box that they made. Amen. Now he said this, I don't know how true it is, but I, I tend to believe him because he was preaching. Amen. And I believe he wouldn't stand up and tell a lie in front of everybody. Amen. And just make something up. But I ain't never seen one either. Amen. But they made this thing, Sister Sue, so that that Watermelon would take the form of a square. Amen. You know why? Easier to store. I thought, man, that's good. I got to thinking about that. I thought, man, that makes sense. You know, get square and cut it. Set it in the refrigerator. You don't worry about rolling off, falling on the floor when you open the door. I mean. <laughs> He ain't got to cut the thing up and put it in a bowl. Amen. He just leave it on. Just cut the top off of it. Go in there and, and every now and then get you a slice out of it. Amen. And it holds itself. I got to thinking about that. Amen. Got to thinking about God's Word and how that. Listen to what it says. Be not conformed to this world. We need to change, don't we? Amen. If there's not been a change in our life, our lifestyle, the way that we think, the way that we act, and the way that we walk, amen? Yes. Brother Johnny, if there's not been a transformation, then we're not born again. And we're still wanting to do the same old things, right, Brother Johnny? Still thinking about them, right? Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost in here, amen. I'm trying to help you. God's trying to get you out of bondage, amen. Yes. Trying to get you out of the River Jordan, if you would, amen. And on over to the promised land, amen. Come on, bro. How many know God's a delivering God, yeah, amen. amen? He's the one that sets us free, amen. We can count on Him, right? He said He'd never leave us nor forsake us, amen. But He would be there with us till it, forever and ever, right? And that what we read. So what we need to learn to do is put our trust in Him and believe in God's Word and know that God said that we're not to be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen. And that ye may prove that it is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. 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 So sin, sin, I can't help it. Or you know, I've always been like this. And that's just me. That's unacceptable. That's right. Or even sin, well, I've got a problem. No, my friend, it's not your problem. It's God's. See, the problem you do got, you do got a problem. It's the way you're thinking. That's the problem. See, because when we begin to put all our trust and faith in God, we don't have to worry about the things of this world. Amen. Amen. True. We don't have to be bothered and troubled on every side, even though the storms are going to come. Even though we're going to face them and we're going to be ill that time, we can still have peace. Mm -hmm. I like that song. Peace of God, cover me. I like that. Amen. Amen. You 
we practice that tonight. Amen. Didn't sound like it, did it? Amen. Can't carry a tune in the bucket unless I hear somebody else sing. And then I have a hard time carrying a tune in. Amen. That's another one of them commercial breaks, y'all. Amen. Wake up. I'm glad some folks can smile. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're not in a dungeon. We're in the house of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's here to help us. He's here to bring deliverance in our life and to set us free. Amen. And get us on track. Amen. This place is not a whipping post. Amen. When you have an opportunity, come to this altar. You ought to run up here. Amen. It ought not be a threat or a bother. Amen. But it ought to be a, a joy. Amen. To know that you can go and kneel down at His feet anywhere. Amen. No matter whether it be right here at this altar or right there at your feet or at your bedside. No matter if you're at the car wash or you're at Walmart or no matter where you're at, God said He would be there. We just got to trust Him. We got to believe it. Amen. Just like Brother Watts did when he said, I'm healed. Come on. Amen. I remember something else Brother Watts shared while we were talking about Brother Watts and then I go on. Brother Watts said he used to smoke. He quit smoking. He was working as a mechanic, I believe what he said, and, and, and changed tires or old chains or whatever he done, amen, and a mechanic right there in, in, in the garage, and he was sleeping in the garage floor. And there was a cigarette butt laying there on the ground, and he went to reach, lean down there and pick it up, and God said, no, don't you pick it up. Remember him testifying that. He said, God told me not to pick it up. Told me not to touch it. Any unclean thing. I thought, well, did you pick it up? Of course not, he did. Why? <laughs> because he loved God and he heard God's voice. Amen. But you know what's wrong with a lot of the church today? They're picking it up. I'm not talking about a cigarette, amen. amen. I'm talking about unclean things. Mm -hmm. Thoughts, feelings. Right. The way we act and the things that we do, amen. We're giving a place to the devil. Amen. Sandra said you got to stay off the phone. Amen. Call on God. Amen. That's good advice. Amen. Don't call everybody and tell everybody and talk about this and talk about that. Call on God and give it to God and let God take care of it. Amen. That's what it's going to take in order to build a church. Amen. Or else you're going to tear it down. Right. And I'm preaching to you, amen, because I don't do those things, amen. I don't talk about people, amen. I don't put people down, amen. If I say something, I'll say it to their face. If I say it to you, amen, I, I, I'll i say it straight to them too, amen. But for some of you, you're not like that because you'll say something bad about me and then you'll come up and pat me on the back and tell me how to a message I preach, Amen. And I know you do it, amen? But I still love you. And I'm not putting you down, I'm just telling you God wants to deliver you and set you free, amen? And if you keep doing those things, I'm going to love you anyways, amen? Why? Because I know God wants me to help you get past Jordan, amen? Come on. And I don't want you to drown in Jordan, amen? I want you to make it to the promised land. Amen. Amen. You should want me to make it to the promised land. We should want each other to make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. That's true. We should encourage one another to do the right thing. Amen. Amen. There's been times I've had I've walked up on conversations, brother Cletus, and walked in the room and and, and, and people be talking about so and so, and I hear just a few words of it, and I just turn and walk out. Amen. I don't say that. None of my business. Now, if God tells me to say something to them, I say, Lord, I'll be talking about them like that, you know. But if God don't tell me, I just keep my two cents out of it. Amen. I ain't got much sense, no way. I can't be giving it away. Amen. <laughs> Senator tells me all the time I'm down there in Bastard Rocks. So, so I, I didn't know rocks were smart, no way. But at least I know how to stand. Amen. Right? I'm going to stand. 
for what's right, baby. I'm telling you, I believe God's really wanting to do something with our church. Amen. I'm going to say it that way. With this church. Amen. It's not that we're not a part of any other church because we can fellowship with any church as long as they love the Lord. Amen? Yep. Right? Amen. Amen. But God's wanting to take this remnant here and do something special with us. I believe that. Amen? Amen. I believe I was sent to Fayetteville, Tennessee to make a difference, Brother Cleese. Amen. I remember the times when I was praying and I said, God, wherever you want me to go, wherever, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. If you'll just tell, show me and tell me, God. Wake up and God's telling me, I want you to move to the other side of Huntsville. At that time, I was living south of Huntsville. I said, which side? North, east, west, what? Camp members me. Telling him, amen, because I was working up there at Northwood at that time and God spoke to me, amen, and told me that I come pulling in at the job site. And when I met Kent, Kent cussed like a sailor, looked like a sailor, amen, looked like a biker, amen, had a long rat tail back here, amen, and hair short up here. Big old long rat tail back here, and I didn't know what to think about Kent because when I first seen him, amen, I was down in the floor working in an apartment, amen, and Kent come through him and his boss, and Kent was talking and just cussing like a sailor. I thought, my goodness. I said, you you look like a smart young man or a smart man. I said, I said, I thought you were smarter than that. And he looked at me like I was crazy. Amen. A few minutes later they come back through and he asked me, he said, he said, what are y'all doing? I said, well, I'm do I think I was doing the cabinets. I don't remember what I was doing. Something on the inside. And he said, Well, we've been on the frame. I said, You do any frame? I said, Well, yeah, I can. I, he said, Well, he said, uh, he said, I, I I'm gonna be able to Exterior out here. Looks like we got this contract and uh and, and we need somebody to do some framing. So next thing you know, Kent got me a big job doing the framing. Amen. And I just wonder, Brother Hines, if I hadn't stood up for Jesus right there and said what little bit that come out of my mouth, amen, to Kent, if Kent would have even had a conversation with me. But I think God rewarded me. And you know what happened? He come back about a month later to start the job. He wasn't cussing no more. A few weeks later, that rat tail left. A few weeks later, he began to try to quit smoking. And all he wanted to do was talk about the Lord. I'm serious. It happened just like that. Come on. Blowed my mind. I thought, God, did I have a part in this? And what I said that day to him, did it register to him to the point that he changed his life? I'll never know that answer. I know I didn't save him, Brother Johnny, by any means, but when you witness to somebody and you say things, you kind of wonder if they have an impact. Amen? But I can tell you the impact it had. Amen? I come to the come to the job site that morning, amen, and before I got out of the truck, before I walked all the way around to the back of the truck, Kent met me there and he said, hey brother, you looking for a place to move? <laughs> and I just had that dream, vision, God showing me and telling me he wanted me to move. Amen? God makes a difference, Sister LeBond. Moved. What, two days later, I moved it. Moved to Flintville right about rock throwing distance from Kent's house. I can step out on my front porch and see there you go. Amen. Next thing I know, a month or so later, I meet Sandra through Kent and Lisa. Come on. God knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. Brother Cletus. What we have to do is get in a place. See, God knew my heart. And he knew I wanted to do the right thing. Amen. He knew that I was capable of fulfilling that which he called me to do. Amen. And it was his job to get me there. Amen. It was my job to follow him. Amen. I'm telling you, it's your job. Amen. To put your trust and faith in God and know that you know that you know that nothing by any means on this earth shall come upon you and harm you. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. That God will have your back. Amen. There's nothing God can't do. Amen. Brother Johnny, I'm telling you tonight. Amen. It will just transform. Yeah. Amen. Into the creature that God called us to be. Amen. God will take care of the rest. Amen. I believe it. God's proved it to me. Time and 
time again. I remember being at Dan's church up here at Park City. I remember Brother Cletus, God starting to talk to me, amen, through people at first, telling me and, and putting a thought of pastoring the church in my mind, amen. It was planting them seeds, amen, but God was having them do it to get me ready, amen. amen. Even started using my wife and, and Sister Barbara, amen, began to say things. Sister Barbara called Sandra up and says, hey, has Derek been talking about pastoring the church? Sandra asked him. She said, I don't know. He ain't said nothing to me about it. The next thing I know, she's on the call with her. She looks over at me and says, Sister Barbara wants to know if, 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 if God's been talking to you about pastoring the church. I said, well, why? I said, do what? I said, no, I can't pastor no church. And I can't. But if I follow him, I can do whatever he wants me to. Amen. And so can you. Amen. No matter what it is, Sister Lohan. Whether it's to teach, whether to work with kids, whether it's to hold the door, vacuum the floor, or if in the garbage can, no matter what it might be. Witness to thousands, amen. No matter what it might be. I didn't know I was going this way. It looked like it's going to be a long night, y'all. Y'all just buckle up and hold on, amen. amen. I'm over halfway there. Somebody say praise the Lord, amen. amen. But let me say this, amen. God knows what he's doing. Let me backtrack just a moment. I was in Decatur. I was living in Hartflat this time. And I'd pray, God, I want to preach to thousands. God, I know you can make this happen. I don't know how how I can do anything like this, but God, I want to preach to thousands. It's poor to become a pastor, amen. But I knew I had give, been given a call and preach, amen. And I had a desire to witness to whoever, whenever, and however. It didn't matter. Didn't matter if I was at Walmart or if I was at the drive-thru, amen. If I seen you, I was going to talk to you about Jesus, amen. If you didn't like it, you just had to get over it, amen, because I couldn't help it. Did you hear me? Come on. Something happened in my life. I wasn't no longer the same. I couldn't help it, sister all. Amen. I like it when I get to can't help it. Did you hear me? Yeah. I like it when I can't help it, amen. I've heard people and I've had pastors come up to me and say, Brother, you just kind of got beside yourself, didn't you? I said, yeah, it was good too, didn't you? Amen. I'm glad it wasn't me. Amen. They didn't like that too much. But I've had them do that. Pastors come up that I was sitting under discouraging me from getting up witnesses. And then I've had some that come to me and out of the sincerity of their heart wanted me to do the right thing. Amen. Says, Brother Derek, I just want to talk to you. Uh, me and Brother Milton sat here and we talked about this and we feel like that, that we just need to sit you down. Said, we don't want to hurt you by any means, brother. Said, but you just got to use some wisdom when you get up to testify. Don't stop me right in the middle of my message and say, Brother Rogers, I got a, I got a testimony. Because I would. I was over Zeal and Dumber Dumb, amen? <laughs> Told you Sandra thought I was dumber than a basket of rocks, amen? She might be right, but he's not dumb, amen? And I'm just dumb enough to put all my trust and faith in God, amen? I'm not bragging on me, amen? I'm bragging on God, amen? Because if God hadn't made a move in my life like he has, amen, I wouldn't be this way, but it's because of him, brother Doc. I know that I know that I know no matter what comes down the pipe, no matter what it looks like, God's going to take care of me. He promised me he would. And I believe him, man. It's just to die. I'm not going to doubt God. Amen. I don't care if I have to go into the prison. Amen. I don't care what I have to go through. Amen. Whatever it might be, I'm going to trust God. Amen. I'm going to stand up for what's right. Amen. Even when I'm wrong, I'm going to stand up for what's right. In the name of Jesus. What do you mean even when you're wrong, Brother Derek? When I don't feel like it. Amen. But I'd rather not. Amen? Don't 
tell me you don't get that way. There's times that we know what we're supposed to do, but we just don't feel like it, so we don't do it. But I'm not going to be like that, brother. I'm going to serve God with all my heart, no matter what, amen. By the grace of God, I'm not going to quit, amen. I'm going to keep on keeping on putting my trust and faith in Him, know that I know that I know that God's going to bring me through, and that's what God wants you to know tonight. Amen. He wants you to know that He's there. He said He sent a comforter that will be there for you forever. Amen. Be there with you forever. Amen. Amen. You're not alone. Amen. Sometimes we feel all alone, don't we? Yeah. Sometimes we feel like nobody really cares. Yeah. The other day, uh, Kent called, or I called Ken. Amen. I think I called Ken. Amen. I was talking to Kent for a minute, and I heard Lisa talking in the background. I said, I said, your wife right there? And he said, yes, she's right here. I said, can I talk to her for a minute? And I said, Lisa, I said, I think I said to her, did you quit church? <laughs> and she said, no, I had not quit, brother. It's been hard. This, and I don't know all she, she said, but, you know, she said, no, she had not quit. I said, well, I did. I thought I was going to have to come and talk to you. I said, we've been missing y'all. You know, you need to be there. And she says, y'all pray for me. I'm going to be there Sunday. Y'all just pray for me. Pray. And I could hear the sincerity in her heart and the things from what she was saying. She was serious about it. Amen. But a lot been going on. You know what, brother? Johnny? No matter what goes on, if the doors are open, we need to be here. Yes, we do. And I'm not down in Sister Lisa. Come on. Amen. I know they had to move and do things. Amen. And that's between her and God. Amen. But as a pastor, I had to let her know. And as a pastor, if she's going to work with the kids, she's got to be accountable. Not only to the church, but to the kids and most of all to God. Amen. And I can tell you tonight, amen, if we don't take up the cross and follow God and put our trust and faith in Him, you know what? At times, we'll mess up. Yes, sir. I've messed up. I have, Brother John. There have been times I've messed up. There have been times, Brother Johnny, I know you've messed up. There's been times Brother Johnny's called me up. He said, Brother Derek, he said, I just want you to know, I want you to forgive me for the, for the way I acted. I'm sorry I shouldn't have acted like that. And, and I, want, I, I want your deepest uh, uh, sympathy or whatever. I want to apologize to you, Brother. I said, Brother, you don't owe me no apology. I said, I love you. I said, we're human. I understand. Don't worry about it. Just put it, give it to Jesus, and don't worry about it. Right? Why? We're human, y'all. But we can't let it be an excuse, can we? We've got to learn to crucify. And all he was doing by calling me up was making sure that I knew that he knew he wasn't right. Amen? About the situation. What was it? No, it wasn't none of your business. Amen? Right. Right. Ain't none of your business. If you want to go to Johnny, he can tell on himself. Amen? All it'll do is help him crucify his flesh a little bit more and run that old devil on off some more, won't it? Amen? Amen? That's all it does, amen? And that's what we need. We need to learn to expose the enemy. When we do something wrong, we don't need to act like it's no big deal and it's all right. Even though I told him it wasn't no big deal to me because, hey, it wasn't my problem. What he was dealing with was between him and God. But I appreciate it and respect him for the phone call that he gave me. And I don't think that Sister Lisa got offended at all. No, I did not. Matter of fact, I kind of felt, I heard a little concern that she appreciated somebody thinking about her. I and, think I told you that. Yeah, you told me that. Amen. She said, I appreciate y'all thinking about me and caring about me. Being <laughs> concerned, I think, what she said. Amen. But to say all that is for this, y'all. We got to realize, amen, that no matter what we go through, 
No matter what storms come, no matter what trials we go through, we've been changed from the old. And we put on the new. Amen? Yep. And if we're trying to put the new and old wineskins, you know what? It's going to burst. And it's all going to leak out. Amen? See, I thought I'd never turn my back on God. I, I, I. Or me, me, me. You hear me? Come on. Are you hearing what God's saying? Amen. We can't do it without Him. Amen? Yes. That's right. Our trust has got to be in Him. Right. Completely and totally yes. in Him. Amen. And when it's like that, we can be like Paul said. We can praise him anyway. Paul and Silas got thrown in the prison. Amen. The doors, they had shackles upon them, their arms and their feet. Amen. They was bound. Amen. And they, they were sitting in prison, couldn't get out. Amen. They was locked up. And in the midnight hour, they begin to praise God. Amen. They begin to sing praises of Zion. Amen. Unto the King of Kings. Amen. And you know what? They got set free. Why? Because God will not be bound. Amen. I'm telling you, God is of a free spirit and free will. Amen. And you need to serve Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. And don't let these spirits come in and bind you down. Amen. But stand up and magnify God. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the doctors tell you. Amen. I don't care what it might feel like. Amen. Just go ahead and claim that healing anyway. Amen. Yeah. And believe God for His healing because He said you've been healed by the stripes on Jesus. Jesus is back, amen, that you already are healed, amen. amen. So, well, Brother Derek, I got this pain in my back. I don't care. It may hurt, amen. Say, so, God, I don't know why. You know, there's times, amen. Brother Johnny, I'll go walking across the board. All of a sudden, my, something hit me, man. And I'm like, God, oh, wait, what is that, man? My back's hurting. I look at Santa and I said, man, oh, what's going on? My back's bothering me. I said, I must have turned wrong or something. And all of a sudden, God will have me praying for whoever else might be hurting like that. And you know what? As soon as I begin to pray for somebody else, 99% mm -hmm. of the time, Brother Johnny, that thing will leave. Amen. That's right, See? brother. It works. Don't. I'm like, God, if you want me to pray for somebody, you can hurt me. God make me feel all that. Just get me to pray for them. Come on. But see, God knows, don't we? Yes, Amen. Amen. We say we're going to do a lot of things, but do we do it? Did you hear what I said? I said we say we're going to do a lot of things. Oh, how many of you made promises? Oh, but God, if you'll do this, I'll do this. Probably every one of us in here. Amen. Oh God, I promise if you'll just hear my prayer, God. God, and you'll do this and you'll do that. God, I promise I'll do this. As soon as God does it, you don't do nothing. Huh? Right? Right. God knew you wasn't going to do it anyway. But He still wanted you to know that He could hear you. Amen? Do you hear me? Do you hear Him tonight? Amen? Are you listening? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. Almost through. Somebody say praise the Lord. About praise time, Lord. Brother Derek. Go ahead, Kim. <laughs> Amen. Listen. Verse 1. It says, Wherefore, <coughs> seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. What about you tonight? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to stop. I was going to go on, go on and read to you. We know Jesus is the author and finisher of our race. We can't do it without Him. Amen. I'm telling you, if you find yourself trying to do it on your own, you're already backing up. Amen. 
Your faith and your trust has to be in God. Amen. And if you're not putting your faith and trust, you're not putting God number one in your life. Amen. You're going to find out, amen, that you can't do it without Him. Amen. And that you need Him. Amen. He lets us, those, amen, that are doing it all right. Amen. You say, well, Brother Derek, it just seems like the more, more steps I take towards God, I heard somebody say this the other day. Every, every time I take two steps, the devil knocks me back three. Do you feel like that sometimes? Feel like it seems like the harder you try to do things for God, the more the devil finds. Amen. And that's the way it is. Let me just go ahead and tell you. That's the way it is. And he's going to continue to be that way until the ends of this earth. Amen. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. You say, Brother Derek, if I keep serving God, it's going to get worse. Yeah. It is. But you know what? The good thing about being a child of God, you don't have to worry about it. God's going to take care of you. Amen. He promised he'd take care of you. Amen. I said, boy, God, you got your hands full when you saved me. Amen. That's what I said. Amen. Now, God saved a lot of people, but buddy, he got his hands full now. Amen. Right? That's a hot mess, I'll just tell you. I was in Mary Clay up to my neck. Amen. Almost covering my mouth. I was just about to go under. Amen. I remember. Strung out on crack cocaine so bad I couldn't leave it alone. Wasn't happy about it at all. Amen. And I remember. Remember God. Reaching down. Lifting me up. He's not a God of just one time chances. But he's a God of many chances. Amen. He's a God that will never give up. Amen. He's a God that loves you no matter what. Amen. Thank the Lord. He loves the vilest sinner upon this earth today. Yes, Amen. He, he does. Loves them. He sure does. He cares for them and he looks towards them to cry out to him, to ask him to come in and to forgive them. Yes. Amen. To accept him as their Lord and Savior. And what about you tonight? Are you sitting here tonight under the sound of my voice and you're not really sure if you've been saved yet, amen? Or maybe you're backslidden, amen, and you know that you're not where you need to be, amen? Let me encourage you tonight, amen, to run to God, amen? Let me just go ahead and help you tonight, amen? If there are things in your life that you know God's not happy with, amen? There's times that you find yourself doubting, amen, and worrying about this and worrying about that, amen? I want you to know, amen, God don't want you to worry, amen? He wants you to trust Him, amen. He wants you to put your faith and trust in Him, amen. I'm telling you, amen, if we don't trust God, the Bible says no to do good and not to do it sin, amen. I'm here to tell you tonight, amen. God don't want us to walk in sin, amen. He don't want us giving place to these spirits, amen. But He wants us to be that overcomer, amen. To put our trust in faith in the comforter that said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. Wants us to know that no matter what we go through, Sister Sue, no matter how hard it gets, amen. Sister Sue's another warrior in here, amen. See her go through some things. I remember when Brother George was flat on his back, amen. It's all right, ain't it, Brother George, amen. Flat on his back. She'd have the church come to her house and pray for him. Brother George was laying on his back, couldn't do nothing. He didn't want us there, amen, but there wasn't nothing he could do about it, amen. I can't believe <laughs> He wasn't going nowhere, amen. But you could tell he didn't really want us there, amen. That was the first time I ever met George was at their house and praying for him. Didn't know him, but Sister Sue loved him. She wanted him saved. She wanted him back in church. Amen. And he knew he had a calling on his life. God 
God blessed you, Brother George, like he did me. Amen. I love Sister Sandra with all my heart. Sometimes I can wring her neck. Amen. Sometimes I want to, but I know better. Amen. That might come in small packages, don't it, Lisa? Amen. Kid knows what I'm talking about. Amen. But just go ahead and take you, amen. God knows what you need. He's able to meet your need. He's able to take care. But you got to trust Him. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. you got to trust Him. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Lay not unto thy own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all thy ways, and He'll direct your path. For some of you, you need to come acknowledging tonight. Amen. You need to come and kneel down at His feet and ask Him to help you to overcome these things. Help you to do what's right. Amen. I can't make you come to this altar. But I can tell you the greatest thing you can accomplish tonight is to yield and humble yourself in the presence of God and just ask God to take over. Amen. I remember Amen. I remember a time where all I wanted to do was hear God's voice. All I wanted to do was feel His presence again. I remember that time, amen, when, when I didn't know what I was going to do, amen, but I knew that I needed to get back home, amen. I knew I needed to be in His presence and be in it. Being about the Father's business. I knew that that's what I needed to do, amen. And I was trying to get there the, every way that I knew possible, amen. But it didn't happen until coming to God with a broken heart and a contract spirit in a minute. God knew in a minute. You know what, Randy, when that happened, God lifted me back up. He washed me back off and He set me back a running again, amen. And I'm telling you, he'll do you that way too. He wants you to run the race. Amen. He wants you to be accounted for. Amen. He wants you to serve him with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. And if there's things that you need to repent of tonight, amen. Paul said to repent daily. Don't wait till you get home. Amen. Come down here at this altar tonight, amen. And crucify your flesh. Don't worry about what anybody else might think or say, amen. Because it really don't matter. It's not between them and you. It's between you and God. And what matters is that you please the Lord tonight. Amen. Things in your life. Amen. That you know God is not happy with. Amen. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Amen. God expects you to repent of it. Amen. He's looking at you to call on Him and to help you. Amen. For some of us in here, the worst enemy we have is our own flesh. It's not the devil. It's what we desire in our mind and in our heart. Amen. What we want. Amen. Do you hear me? What about you tonight? Amen.
Coming home from the club one night, drunk, passed out. Found myself sitting in the woods, clipping a cedar tree about 10 foot high, amen, in Bateman. Cutting the cedar tree in two, amen. The transmission sitting in the front seat with me when I woke up, color of blood off my head, laying in the seat with a little hole in the dash and flames coming out from underneath the hood, amen. And climbed down across that high hood, didn't burn my hand, didn't do nothing to me, amen, but busted my head open, having that wreck. Looked up, couldn't see nowhere, didn't know where I was at, didn't know where the road was at, all I could see was a little light. I walked up the hill there, there was a road, amen. I could still see that little light down the road. I walked down that road, amen, come to the house, knocked on the door. Nobody would come to the door. Found another house behind it, amen. An old lady come to the door, amen. She opened the door. Next thing I know, I was being taken to Huntsville Hospital, amen, in an ambulance. Tell me that God's not watching over us, amen. Lost and undone, a sinner, amen. God cared for me, amen. <laughs> How much more will they do for his children, amen? I'll tell you what he did do. He hung on an old cross. He took the cat of nine tails, amen. He was beat to, uh, upon recognition, Brother Dustin, amen, so that you and I could be saved, amen. I'm telling you, he went through the ringer for you and I, amen. All he asked us to do is to sell out. Brother Watch did believe. Jesus steps out. God loves you. My friend, he loves you. I love you. I appreciate you coming tonight. I hope that you got something out of tonight's message. Amen. I could tell you more stories after more stories after more stories. God's never let me down. He's never let me down, Brother Hines. Always showed up right on time, kids. He's a good God. Amen. God makes things happen. Nobody said it was going to be easy. But it's the best thing you could ever do. Amen. It's surrender over to Him. Amen. He'll take care of you. Your attendance, your attention tonight, amen. I hope that you got something out of the message, something that'll help you to put God first in your life, amen. That's what He wants you to do. I love you tonight. If everyone's through praying, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Everyone, dismiss in the name of Jesus, amen.
Bless you, Sister Shirley. Bless you, bro. Appreciate you so much. I do you too, brother. I do you too. He was through from the vehicle. Which one, of it, which one of them, they had a, there's two in the family that was married to do some in the family, but they got together, you know, they got yeah. divorced and married. Yeah. Which one was that? Oh, that was Dwayne, I'm pretty sure. Well, he had a daughter that was messed up too, on drugs too. Drugs real bad. But uh, Dwight Frank had some problems for a long, you know, uh, yeah. Sister Janice got colon cancer, just, just one thing after another. Yeah. The devil starts piling on, you start, hey, yeah. turn that bar off, I'm going to turn a lot of stuff off. When, when the devil starts piling on, he just starts.